Welcome to All Shepherds Online Worship. Yes, welcome to All Shepherds Online Worship as we continue this summer sermon mini-series on being sown in the Word, how God's Word feeds us and springs forth in our life. As we continue this journey, there are some things that we just want to let you know is if you like a full-length worship service, please feel free to go to St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Delaware, Ohio, their YouTube channel, uh, where we have worship being live streamed on Sunday mornings. If you'd like to join us for drive-in worship, please join us at All Shepherds at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Those are just some of the things going on. Let's go ahead and get started as we worship here together. So let us turn to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you bring us to you each day. And as we gather, we bring ourselves to you. And we ask that you enter into our lives and that you help us to see you more and more. Strengthen us, help us to grow, help us to know you and be with us and help us to worship. We entrust our lives into your care through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our reading for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slave of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where, where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No! For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And his disciples, and he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of the kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace fire where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of our Lord. I heard that. Let anyone with ears listen. Let us pray. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let anyone with ears listen. I was thinking about tongue twisters. <laughs> okay, stop here. Let anyone with ears listen. And you're thinking about tongue twisters? Yes. Okay, because tell me why. we have to listen very closely to say it. Remember? Got it, okay. I mean, we're outside with all this wood, so we think of how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could wo chuck wood. Well, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck chuck wood? I don't know. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know. You tell me. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck chuck chuck wood? <laughs> Those are all of our favorites. I had one that we made up on our own. My friend, his name was Sean, and his sister got a new job selling shutters. So one day we were like, Sean's sister sells shutters. Do you know how hard that is to say? <laughs> Sean's sister sells shutters. I got it. <laughs> you had to think about it though, right? Sean's sister sells shutters. 
call. <laughs> right, Sean's sister does sell shutters. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give up now. Okay. <laughs> but as I was thinking about this, we have to listen to the words and get twisted. In fact, I was reading um, a Dear Abby article, and she had put some, um, some words that churches had twisted unknowingly. Right? Okay. So a few of them I want to listen to you to listen to. Okay. One announcement in a church bulletin read, Due to a pastor's illness, Wednesday's healing service will be discontinued until further notice. <laughs> okay, I get it. Okay. All right. And another one wrote okay. the low self esteem support group will meet Thursday from seven to eight thirty. Please use the back door. Oh, that's going to be helpful. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. What All else? Right. One During one service, a preacher announced, this being Easter Sunday, yeah. we will now ask Mr. Valance to come forward and lay an egg on the altar. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> and finally, oh, these are the... the the church choir these are for you if you're in our church choir Not or any church choir you, for that right matter. but it was an announcement it said at the evening service tonight the topic will be what is hell come early and hear our choir practice Ooh, bad. <laughs> that is bad not that's our bad. choir that's not our choir no 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 yeah, no no we not Lutherans, ours. we don't like speaking about hell okay although okay. this scripture does talk about evil today okay let's tell about the, that last church one you said all right is this your favorite i don't know maybe it's not to pick on our choir but this was written in a church bulletin it said eight new choir robes are currently needed due to the additional the addition of several new members and to the deterioration of some older ones Okay, I, I th I, I've listened enough. Let's go on. <laughs> well, sometimes we get ourselves tangled up in words, right? Oh, whether yeah. it's tongue twisters or whether it's not intending to sound the way we are. Well, it's true. I mean, think about how many weeks we've been doing these actual uh, video virtual services. And as we've done them, there's been numerous times. And if we had kept all the clips of us going, blah, 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 <laughs> we get tied up in our words. It's just true. Yeah, and it's easy to do. Yeah. And I think the scripture today is all about that getting tangled up and getting twisted. And sometimes we find ourselves twisted so much that it's hard to get out. But, well, that is really what the scripture is about today. I mean, the wheat gets tangled in with the weeds and it becomes hard to even tell the difference anymore. And when the slaves of the household go and present the problem to the master of the household they present this real predicament and they say what should we go do so it can keep growing should we get rid of the weeds and his response is no don't do that because if you get rid of the weeds you then will get rid of some of the wheat because they're so tangled up they're so intermingled and jesus is using this parable to explain the kingdom of heaven and so i get a little tangled up in that like what does he mean mm. you know is it an answer to the age-old question why does good things happen to bad people mm. or is it more than that and so as i was thinking i thought back to a couple weeks ago when i had you help me out with the high school youth group okay and it was our small group youth group and they were meeting via zoom and the topic of the night is how do you recognize evil and so you opened up the conversation and do you remember the response silence silence yeah because we don't talk a lot about evil and how how do we discern what is evil how do we discern what is weeds and what is wheat? Yeah, and that can be really hard in the society that we live in. In fact, a lot of times I think people want to think of, well, I am the wheat and you are the weeds. 
Well, thanks, because you're Pastor messing Wendy. Up everything, right? Wow, but it's, I'm but the weeds <laughs> and she's the wheat. You all heard that. I want to be honest. She's the wheat and I'm the weeds. Okay, I, I'm with you on this one. Okay, we're go. all tangled up. Yes, we are all tangled up together. <laughs> and maybe my words got a little tangled up there. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but but I, nonetheless, I get the gist. Yes. But a lot of times we do. We want to think of ourselves as the good, as the weed, wheat, as the wheat. And everybody now else you're all tangled up if you're the weeds, weeds or the wheat. Right, exactly. <laughs> but how often do we do that? It's this us versus them mentality. Even this parable will lead us to that, right? The good versus the evil. The Democrats versus the Republicans. The liberals versus the conservatives. The Believers the, versus the non-believers. The saints versus the sinners. I mean, we make it all about an either or. Um, one or the other, the yin, the yang. I mean, we want that to be, and it's neat and clean. It's black or white, right? How often do we do that in our minds and in our world? And, and in doing that, how often do we forget what Jesus says about this parable? Is that wait till the very end and gather it all up and all causes of sin will be removed. I, I think oftentimes we focus on where those weeds are in others' lives instead of looking at ourselves and see what weeds are growing in our own lives. Right. We just watched for, for your birthday a few weeks ago, we watched The Wrinkle in Time, mm -hmm. right? And that is an excellent reminder of this. It's about this young girl and a six-year-old boy whose father disappears. And he's trying to find um, a wrinkle in the universe. And for four years he's gone, and this family has to survive and live without them. And the people in the schools and everyone around, they just kind of ridicule them, right? And then all of a sudden the six-year-old comes in contact with these people in the universe. And they have heard their, his, their father's cry and they've come to help him. But the girl, she's like a teenager now, and she's got an attitude and a chip on her shoulder, and she's resentful and angry. Um, and the six-year-old is still innocent and kind and loving, and so he still believes in the good and the goodness of his father and his sister. And, and so they go searching for the father. And even the people from the universe, they're not quite sure about her, right? They don't know about this young girl and if she can really do the quest that they need her to and really save her father. And so the story goes on. And finally, when everyone else falls away, it comes down to this teenage girl. And it's the words, the words that one of these, one of these people leading her on a quest says to her, that sticks with me when you remind me of it. I give you the gift of your faults. Mm. How often we look at our lives and we don't see our faults as something that we need to understand, seek to understand, or may be a gift to us. Right. Perhaps if we understood our weeds more, we would understand ourselves more. And perhaps it's not an us versus them. Perhaps each of us have weed and wheat within us. And therefore, if we try to get rid of the weeds, we might destroy ourselves. And in destroying ourselves, we're not showing grace to that which God has created and made. Because when we allow ourselves to understand the weeds and the wheat within ourselves, we show ourselves grace and therefore look at others in love and grace as well. Right, so we can turn to our great sowers who sees the beauty and sees the hope and has the patience to endure and realizes the gift that's in his field. And it's when we can look at those places deep within ourselves that we don't experience life. 
that God's life sprouts through. You were telling me about the story of Mr. Rogers and uh, even uh, past president Jimmy Carter. Right. So often if you read about them, they did great. They were great men with great influences. But later on in their life, after they had done so many things, they had actually um, found themselves rather depressed because the very things that they thought they were doing for good ended up hurting other people. And so again, it was that intermixing feeling of how do I live and how am I faithful if the very things I think I'm doing out of love end up not loving someone. And, and I think that's part of our faith journey, that as we do stand up, as we do live this life, we realize how intermixed things are and how complicated. And that not often, er, and, not, and often it's not like an either or. Like remember our professor okay. um, in seminary, Dr. Root, he taught us a new word, a German word. And I remember it well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yein. Yein. So when he had an answer for something that wasn't yes or no, he would say yein. It is yes and no. Right? Right. And so I think sometimes that's what we get stuck in is that we want to make it a either or, a one or the other. And perhaps it's a yein. And so when we see these weeds and these wheat intermixed with one another, it's a yein. Because as they integrate, as they're tangled together, as we face them, that's when we grow and when we're harvested and when God enters in and brings out new life. And it's in those points that we not only see the weeds and wheat in ourselves and we show grace towards them, but we show grace towards others and we can work together to share the good news of the kingdom, the kingdom that sprouts forth, that gives hope, that assures us that God is there tending to us. And that's the hope we share until that day that we rest with God. Right, someone sent me a devotion from Kairos this week and it was talking about that. It was saying, you know, the heart of who we are as people of faith is love. And so let's practice love. And it went through six steps of how do you love? And how do you love the other? How do you pray for your enemy? How do you love the one that you disagree with? That other person, right? And I think that as we begin to practice love, we practice with ourselves, despite our weeds within us, and it helps us to practice towards others. I think back that one of the first times I realized that was when we started ministry together mm. because we're taught in seminary to be strong and bold leaders and to make decisions and choices and when we went in there we both had different ideas on how to lead right, right? my ideas were weeds yours ideas were weeds mm -hmm. or my idea was wheat and your ideas was weeds right and, and we had to figure out that we both had flaws shortcomings and gifts to offer each other and the people to who which we were called to offer them. Right, and sometimes how I would do things wasn't necessarily how you would do them, and how you did them wasn't the way I would do them. And if we tried to do it the way each other did, it still felt messed up. And that's still right? the case sometimes. <laughs> exactly. So what we had to learn is to trust and to have faith. And I think this parable ultimately calls us to that. It calls us to have faith and to trust in the sower, in the owner of the vineyard, that God is with us and is working with us no matter what goes on in this world around us. And so as we trust that great sower who is the sower of love, and as we hear God's words, we have new life and new hope. And that new hope is really very simple. You're not weeds and I'm wheat. You're not wheat, and I'm weeds. Within us both, there are weeds and wheat growing, so the kingdom of God be made, will be made known. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the kingdom is growing within us. Allow that kingdom to shoot forth 
and proclaim hope for the world. For it's not me or her, it's the whole body of Christ proclaiming this good news. And we're called to proclaim it in love and to love one another. And as we do this, the weeds will fall away and God's love, God's wheat will flourish forever. Amen. Amen. Well, as, as people of faith, we gather here this day and we hear this word, this word that gives us hope. And as people called in that hope, we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. And now, people of God, let us turn to God with our weeds, with our wheat, with our everything in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and this time that we can come and take time to worship you. And we just ask that you sow good seed in our heart, that you strengthen us and that you help us grow. And as we get tangled up in this world and in the wheat and the weeds among us, that you help us to see you and the hope that only you can give. Give us strength, give us endurance, give us perseverance and courage. Give us all we need to love and to show your love and share your love with others. We come here before you today with lots of turmoil, lots of challenges, lots of obstacles and change among us. Um, each day we have to think through our day in so many new ways and it can become exhausting. And so as we are in this new age living with COVID-19, we just ask that you give and bring your wisdom to our people so that we are able to find a vaccine or a solution to living in this time tangled up and so give us your patience, give us your strength, give us your hope, and help us to trust you in all of this and turn to you with everything. We bring you ourselves. We bring you all of our struggles, our challenges, and our joys and our triumphs. And we just ask that you continue to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to you. Give us your love and help us to have faith and trust in you. We also entrust our loved ones that have gone on before you. As we have been tangled up in the grief and the pain of their loss, we just ask for your assurance, for your hope, for your presence, for your comfort. Assure us that at that last day, you are made known and your love is great. And give us your presence. All of these prayers and any others that you hear deep on our hearts, Lord, we lift and entrust into your care. And we just ask that you enter into our lives in new and great ways so that we can continue to glorify you in all that we do. We pray all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as we send you forth this day, may our loving Lord go with you. May he go before you to guide you, behind you to encourage you and beside you to be your friend. May he go above you to watch over you and beneath you to catch you when you fall. And for he, may he forever be in your heart, giving you his love, his grace, his mercy, and his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we send you out 
at All Shepherds? We are All Shepherds. Go, Go love, love, encourage, encourage nurture, serve, serve all people, people in Christ's name. name. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks for joining us for online worship.